Well, I want to go over some of the basic highlights of the controversy over liposomal vitamin C or encapsulated vitamin C. Actually, I have some of this. I actually just took it out of the refrigerator. This is vitamin C crystals um, encapsulated in non-GMO lethicin, non-genetically modified lethicin. Now, <laughs> you know, I, I really find it kind of hard to believe some of the statements out there about liposomal vitamin C that it's six to eight times stronger than IV vitamin C. And I think I know why they're saying that, it, it, but I would not want to count on a statement like that because if it was that strong, you know, that's going to pretty much clobber every problem you'll ever come across, man, because, you know, they've been finding out vitamin C, actually, if we had this capability back in our bodies like we probably had thousands of years ago, we'd probably live like hundreds of years like Noah did, no problem. In other words, when you're 35 years old, you know, it would be the equivalent of 350 or something. 350 would be like 35, vice versa. Or 500 would be like 50. It's like you add a zero to the end of your age. That's probably what you would be like if, you had, if we had this capability again. And so that's what some scientists are saying. And we do have all four of the genes, but one of them is dormant. In most people, it's completely dormant. Some people have a little bit of capability of uh, producing vitamin C. But we all know if you don't take vitamin C, you get scurvy. It's like it's an essential vitamin, right? But it's probably more essential than that because they found out that, you know, it pretty much conquers any kind of viral or cancel, cancer condition there is, right, if you take a lot of it. But there's like a, there's like a flip side to every damn thing, really. Um, and it's like not that cut and dry, you know, but I just want to try to like highlight a few things here. First off, there's been a lot of thought coming up lately about, um, you know, I, I remember Dr. Linus Pauling, the two-time Nobel Peace Prize winner, like he, he was a big advocate of vitamin C. He actually took three grams of the stuff, uh, which is 3,000 milligrams a day, orally, right? Now, orally is not like getting it in your bloodstream that good. You know, that's, that's quite a bit. That's why you do the lipos, liposomal, because it supposedly gets past the digestive tract. Now, I want to get into a couple things on this because um, I don't really have all the answers, but I've been like trying to sift through the confusion because there's a lot of pro and con. And sometimes I don't like I don't like when the alternative medicine world, whatever you want to call them, exaggerates things too much and puts ex which makes people's expectations too high. You know, I'm just thinking it's a good idea because it doesn't cost you a lot of money. Who you knows? It probably can help you a lot. Who knows, right? I do it, okay? You know, I don't sell this stuff. I'm just doing it, you know? I figure it's a cool idea. But, um, you know, one of the controversies was that, you know, they say that vitamin C is not exorbic acid. It's just actually this other compound. You need this other compound. Don't take exorbic acid or whatever. Uh, you know, I don't know about that deal because actually it was Dr. Linus Pauling I figured out it, it was exorbic, absorbic acid that was vitamin C. It's not like there's a, in other words, you don't need the real highfalutin expensive stuff, <laughs> okay? <laughs> you just need plain exorbic acid. Now, I know like there's some controversy too because I'll tell you like Dr. Linus Pauling actually died of prostate cancer at the age of 93 and he was taking oral vitamin C. But, you know, it's really the, the intravenous vitamin C that's the real powerful one that supposedly really s combats the cancer. But then, you know, he also died at age 93, which is not like 63 or 53, you know, I mean, that's, that's a pretty old age. And, you know, maybe he was, maybe when he went to the hospital, you know, I don't think they'd used intravenous vitamin C on him to try to combat the problem. They probably used conventional methods and he died. You know, I'm, it's probably what it was, right? But um, the liposomal the vitamin C, the encapsulated, they keep saying that it's six to eight times more powerful than intravenous and I'm like I don't know I mean to me that's that seems too good to be true but there's also people out there that state that when you take liposomal vitamin C the measured amount in a bloodstream does not show even that much more than if you just took oral vitamin C it's not much different but there's another caveat out there there's another theory out there or something I don't know if it's a theory but it's another assertion or whatever the hell you want to call it, that the reason the vitamin C level blood measurement is not going up extremely high 
when you're taking liposomal vitamin C is because it's still encapsulated in the blood. It's encapsulated with lecithin, a type of fat, you know, or whatever the hell it is, a protein, a fat. It's encapsulated. So it's not picking it up. It's not seeing it because it's inside this little encapsulation, right? Now, the liposomal coating supposedly when it hits a immune cell or a regular cell it allows the vitamin the absorbic acid to go into the immune cell or the regular cell and do its thing it doesn't actually you know get into the blood as much as you would think that's why I think that might be a correct assumption because it gets past the digestive system that's one thing you know if you take liposomal vitamin C the digestive system doesn't upset the digestive system, so it does get into the blood, but it's not being measured in the blood. And I'm just I'm just applying simple logic because I think where I am, you know, I've, I've followed a lot of different opinions on this deal, and the one I'm really kind of thinking is the best opinion is that it gets through the it does get through the stomach acids because it's coated. It's in a little liposomal ball, right? It gets into the blood. It gets got to go somewhere. It goes into the bloodstream, right? And then you don't pick it up as a measurement in a bloodstream that much because most of it's really still encapsulated. But where does it finally go? It goes directly into the cells or the immune system cells or whatever it's needed. And it's supposed to be very powerful against antiviral and anti, you know, first anti-cancer and all this type of stuff. It's actually more than what people think of it as just an essential vitamin uh... it's really like a souped up powerful hormone that is essential even throughout most of the animal world and a lot of scientists now have been finding out that we probably had this capability way back when in these stories we hear about in the bible when someone so and so lived to be you know uh... you know Noah was nine hundred nine hundred twenty years old and stuff like that that it, it you know in the early days in the biblical history maybe that's accurate accurate stuff people probably were living that long and it might have been because of the inside the vitamin C production capabilities that we had in our body like um, animals will produce many times more vitamin C when they get sick on their own it's like a hormone they produce on their own and you know when they injected IV vitamin C in people it's it's actually done some really wild miracles on stuff they thought was incurable you know like cancers and people dying from some kind of flu or something like that it's pretty much knocks out every damn thing there is so this liposomal vitamin C might not be a bad thing to do I just don't want to ever get somebody's hopes up on a damn thing because it's like you know, when you say it's six to eight times more powerful than IV vitamin C, and IV vitamin C does all these miracles, that you start thinking it's going to do the job guaranteed, and I don't know. I don't know. But then I'm starting to think where, you know, because people are saying that it's not really showing up in the bloodstream, but I'm tending to think it is probably more powerful. It's when I'm, by logic, not just belief, um, and I'm saying I'm just deducing this with simple logic, right? It gets past the blood, it gets past the um, stomach acids, it's still encapsulated, it doesn't upset the stomach, it does get in the bloodstream. It's not really measured in the bloodstream that much, it's measured about a little higher than the equivalent amount of oral vitamin C, and you're thinking, why is that? Well, it's still encapsulated, right? Then where does it go? It does. It has to go someplace, you know. And the encapsulation is like a natural type of fat, lipid fat, or whatever the heck it is. Uh, I'm assuming that it's it's uh, being used directly by the cells. It's actually going directly into the cells. That's what some people are alleging. It's actually being used by the body. It's like staying encapsulated until it actually gets used by the body. That's why it's not being picked up that much on the blood test that's the case it's freaking some super awesome stuff now this technology it's not even high-end technology I put a video out on how to do it you know the homemade liposomal vitamin C now, I don't know if that's better than uh, or just as good as the stuff that's sold but it's a hell of a lot cheaper you know and I'm thinking it's better than oral vitamin C but there's also um, they're also encapsulating vitamin um, 
E, vitamin A, carotenoids. You're also encapsulating sod, which is like super oxidized, uh, whatever it is. It's most, it's one of the most powerful antioxidants going. They're encapsulating that. They're even encapsulating insulin. <laughs> you know, if that happens, you know, if they start encapsulating insulin, what's going to happen in that business, right? You know what I mean? So, um, but if you could do the encapsulation on your own on other other things. Now, I don't know what the actual thing is to encapsulate vitamin A. I'd like to know. I haven't seen anything on that yet, but if I try to find out some good information, I'll put it out. But vitamin C should suffice. But it does look like it's a very smart thing to do. It's cheap to do. It's not going to hurt you. you know I mean, really. You know, it, it, at the, you know, if it does one thing, it's not. It's going to cause you not to have an upset stomach from taking too much vitamin C because it's encapsulated. At least it's going to do that, right? Even if it doesn't perform all these miracles, because when you take a lot of vitamin C, people tend to get upset stomachs or to get the diarrhea or something like that, you know, and that becomes a problem, you know. And the other thing is actually absorbic acid. I know people talk knock absorbic absorbic acid because it's fairly close to sugar. And if you take a lot of it, it almost can, you know, almost act like, I don't know, changing your insulin levels or something like that, I've heard. But um, I do know one thing, that vitamins, any vitamin C you take will be, its effectiveness and absorption will be greatly, greatly reduced if you take it with sugars, like simple carbohydrates and sugars. It will be greatly just um, diluted, more or less. It will be greatly reduced. Really, that's a fact. So, you know, another common sense thing is if you're taking even just plain old vitamin C without even liposomal, uh, encapsulate it, right? If you're just taking plain oral vitamin C and you take it like with foods that are like vegetables or, you know, if you're not, you know, or maybe not around a meal exactly or just take a little water with it, but you don't have a diet with a lot of sugars and simple carbohydrates in it, you have like a, you know, a, maybe almost like an Atkins diet where it's it's fats and proteins mostly, you should have a higher absorption rate of vitamin C because sugars will slow down the absorption rate of vitamin C. That's, that I think is pretty damn solid information right there. Um, I sure would like to know for an absolute fact, even if liposomal vitamin C was half as good as IV. You know, I know there's claims out there it's six to eight times greater strength. It may be a lot stronger than IV. I, I don't know this for a fact, though. Where I'm thinking, the con- like I'm going to repeat it again, though, the liposomal vitamin C gets through the stomach, encapsulated with the non-GMO soy or uh, lecithin. Lecithin. When it gets in the bloodstream, there's people are saying it's not actually getting in the bloodstream because it's not measured in the bloodstream much stronger than oral vitamin C. Maybe it's a little stronger. But there's other people saying that the reason it's not measured in the vitamin in the bloodstream is because it's still encapsulated, and to me that makes sense. But eventually it gets used up in the body because it's encapsulated in something that's natural that the cells recognize or whatever, and it can it, it will attach itself to a cell or a white blood cell or whatever, and eventually. The vitamin C hormone, basically that's what it is, will get in where it's needed. So it's not being excreted from the body, it's actually being used by the body. And that is probably, if that's true, that would probably make you think that, yeah, it's probably stronger than IV vitamin C. I'd like to think that because then we basically got something that's one of the most effective treatments out there, if that's true. And uh, it's not going to be limited to vitamin C because, like I said, you can uh, you can uh, you can encapsulate a lot of different powerful nutrients like sod, one of the most I think that well, it's one of the most powerful antioxidants out there. It's also called like an anti-aging uh, uh, antioxidant, 
And also there's um, vitamin E that could be encapsulated too. So, and a lot, a lot of other things, a lot of other things. So, you know, if this does absolutely, does do what it's supposed to do, and I tend to think that, you know, I tend to think from just, just using like simple logic, if it stays encapsulated, getting through the stomach with all the stomach acids in a place that's supposed to be, you know, digest and break down everything, if it's staying encapsulated there, and then, you know, the next step is the bloodstream. Well, I would think that it, most of it is still encapsulated in the bloodstream. And that is why it's not being picked up as raising, you know, much higher. But eventually, if it's in the bloodstream, eventually it's going to get into the body where it's needed. So I tend to think it is a lot stronger than regular oral vitamin C. But the other caveat is, if you want this to be the most effective, uh, have a diet low in simple carbohydrates and avoid sugars, because that will definitely compete with uh, vitamin C or sorbic acid uh, absorption rates. So, you know, I'd never like to freaking put something out that's going to be like flat out ironclad, this is the way it is. But I think that's the best information out there, what I just told you. I think that's the best information out there that I told you. Which means that liposomal encapsulated vitamin C is worthwhile to do. And you can also make it yourself. I have a video on it. I can, oh, I'll put the link right at the end of this video. You can look at it. It's not hard to do. It's simple. And I think it's worthwhile. So, over and out.